When you wear jewelry, do you want to look like a badass or a douchebag? Now, the answer is obvious. Of course, you want to look good. Well, I've got you covered, gents, with five pieces of masculine jewelry that, when worn correctly, will make you look amazing. Let's start things off with the bracelet. In its pure definition, a bracelet is just a piece of jewelry that goes around the wrist. You also see bracelets that go around the ankle, ankle bracelets, and if it's a solid form, it's known as a bangle. So, I start things off with bracelets because that's where it all begins. So, Russian archaeologists have actually found bracelets carbon dated back to 40,000 years. Yes, human beings were wearing pieces of jewelry that early. People wanted to send a signal. They wanted to show that maybe they had wealth. They wanted to show that they had status and they did that with bracelets. Now, besides show and ornamentation, bracelets also serve a functional purpose. Whenever you were born, guess what? They probably slapped a bracelet on your wrist or on your ankle. Why? Because they wanted to be able to identify you with all those other babies. And nowadays, we often see these sport bracelets where companies are wanting to raise awareness. They're, people are wearing these to remind them of something and that's the power of a bracelet and of jewelry in general is it is a reminder. It's oftentimes of a promise of basically what is going on and what's important in your life. Bracelets come in a wide variety of different styles made from different materials. You're going to find precious stones, precious metals, leather, beads. A simple gold link bracelet may be a great place to start for a guy that's just starting off and he knows, okay, I already like gold. I'm warm toned. This is going to look good with my skin. Or maybe you're cooler tones. You want to go with silver and you want something a little bit different. You don't want to go for just a normal chain. You want something that's a little bit more complex. Or maybe black steel with a special message engraved right on it. Now, me personally, I rarely ever wear a bracelet, but I did want to give it another shot. So, I grabbed some pieces which really weren't going to grab too much attention and I've worn them for a couple days and I have to say, you know what? I kind of forgot it was there and I did get a compliment on, wow, that's a nice bracelet. You don't have to wear something that's really flashy. Me, I went for something that had more of like a, a brushed, pure kind of look to it. So, it really wasn't going to flash. Was it going to grab any attention? I also wore a leather with it and leather is another great option. Very durable and very comfortable. Sometimes people have reactions to different metals, different steels. So, leather is going to be a great option. And when you look at those leathers, know that, hey, I can go with something with a contrast on it or with no contrast. Again, you can wear something that's very muted and just slowly bring it into your wardrobe. Now, gents, all the jewelry, all the rings, all the bracelets, all the necklaces you're going to see in today's video brought to you by The Steel Shop. They're the sponsor of today's video and I love what these guys are doing. They're making quality jewelry at an affordable price and they've got tons of options on their website. I will link to them down in the description with the best discount code you're going to find out there. Use it, guys, because I've got tons of their pieces here and I can tell you for the price, this is a super deal. If you're like me, if you've got a smaller wrist, one of the issues I've had with wearing bracelets is all the ones I've had sent to me or I've looked at, they've been way too big. These bracelets were spot on because they actually say, okay, measure your wrist, then add this amount. They actually show you exactly how to get what you want. And the rings, I just went and measured it and boom, I've got a ring that fits. This is a no brainer. If you're looking to start wearing jewelry, you want to add it to your wardrobe just to add a bit of spice, add a bit of variety to what you're already wearing. Go over to their website, look at all the options they give you when it comes to bracelets. You've got beaded bracelets, you've got steel link bracelets, you've got braided leather bracelets. They've got tons of different rings, they've got necklaces, pendants, they even carry tie clips and cufflinks. And let's not forget engraving. So, if you want to make a bracelet special to you or you want to get a ring, it's your wedding ring, and you want to get an engraving on the inside or the outside, they've got you covered. Gents, I'm linking to the steel shop down in the description. You see anything you like in this video, go check them out, guys. Use that discount code to get the best deal on the web. Again, use that link, go check out the steel shop. Next up, let's talk about rings. The definition of a ring is a round band normally worn around the finger. But there are actually four parts to rings. Did you know that? Let me explain. Now, not all rings are going to have the four parts. If it's a simple ring in which we don't see a precious stone or an engraving, then we're simply going to have what's known as the hoop. Now, these next three parts are if the ring has a center point. Basically, it has a precious stone or it has an engraving. Those three additional parts are going to be the shoulder, the bezel, and the mounting. Now, the shoulder is where basically the hoop starts to straighten. It starts to change its trajectory and then it is going to be in the bezel that we actually have the mount put right in there and the mount is going to be where the precious stone or engraving is laid. Now, rings don't have as long a history as bracelets, but they do go pretty far back. We're talking well over 5,000 years. The Egyptians and a number of other civilizations first started using rings and again, initially they were a symbol of power. If you could afford to have something made 
for your hands. It was quick symbol of who you are, where you were at in society. Now, we saw some interesting things happen in the medieval ages. Basically, the belief that certain stones had certain powers, and it was something that people started to wear them in rings. It was very fashionable, but it was also believed that this would basically protect you, especially from things like the plague. Then we saw in the 16th, 17th century, when they started writing books about marriage, all of a sudden, rings started having a place. Now, what do rings on different fingers mean? Well, guys, don't worry. I've got a video. I will link to it down in the description. So, when you're through with this video, you can go check it out. Next up, we've got the necklace. Similar to the bracelet and the ring, this has a long history. We're talking well over 5,000 years and some believe even farther. Now, who wore this thing? I mean, we're talking the Sumerians. You had the Babylonians. You had the Mesopotamians. You had the Egyptians. Everyone loved their necklaces. But what's really interesting about this is oftentimes it was with religious connotation. It was symbolism. It was to show, okay, this person, we're going to adorn them. And you saw a wide range of different precious metals, stones. You also saw in burials, people would be buried with certain necklaces that were basically to send that person off with their best. Now, really quick, are you familiar with the different types of necklaces? If not, let me illuminate. So, first up, we've got the choker. Men can wear a choker, but normally this is going to be the domain of women. We see the length of about 14 to 16 inches. Next up, we've got the princess necklace. I also like to think the prince necklace because, yes, men can wear it at this length, 18 to 20 inches. Next up, we've got the matinee necklace, about 21 to 24 inches. And what's interesting about this one is it's going to rest on the cleavage. And then anything beyond 30 inches, these are going to be opera or rope necklaces. So, how to wear a necklace and make it look good? For me, it's about being comfortable and about keeping it simple. So, if you grew up wearing a necklace, if you wanted to add a little bit of variety to your look, it's summer, you want to have something that just draws a bit of attention to your chest area because you take care of your body, then why not wear a necklace? Or maybe it's something that has religious meaning to you. I know a number of people love to wear a cross. Maybe they just want to take a simple necklace and put a ring on it that actually has significant meaning to them. Guys, find what you like, wear it with confidence, practice wearing it, and if necessary, adjust the length. That's what a lot of guys, they go out and they buy something and they never think to actually adjust the length so that they feel more comfortable where it hangs. Next up, we've got cufflinks. Cufflinks evolved with men's shirts. Hence, they don't have nearly as long a history as all the other items we just talked about. 1600s, we go back, we see early cufflinks. But it was really the 1800s that they started to pick up, that men started to realize, oh, I can wear this piece of jewelry. Not only to close right here on the cuff, but also on the front of the shirt. So, whenever you wear a black tie, what you'll notice is you have studs, you have other pieces that can be worn on various parts of the shirt. Now, there's a wide variety of different types of cufflinks out there. You're going to see double panel. And this one's easily recognized because it's going to have one end that's a bit larger than the other and it's going to be made from a solid piece of material. You're also going to see other types out there such as the swivel bar cufflink, the toggle back cufflink, and you're even going to see cufflinks that use a small chain to connect the front and the back. Now, you're also going to see fabric cufflinks out there and these are perfectly fine, but understand they are the most casual of all the cufflinks out here. And here's the key to wearing cufflinks. Find a reason to wear them. Make sure that first you're wearing the appropriate shirt. You want to wear a French cuffed shirt. This is going to be a shirt whose cuffs are made specifically to take cufflinks. Do you need to wear it with black tie? Yes, technically you do. It is following the rules of white tie, black tie. You will wear cufflinks. But could you wear it with a more casual shirt, maybe just business attire or maybe business casual? Yes, you could even wear cufflinks in more of a casual environment. Now, let's talk about tie pins, tie tacks, tie bars, tie chains, tie clips, tons of options out there. The point being is this is a piece of jewelry made to keep your tie in place. And we go back to the early days of the tie. Before it was a necktie, it was a cravat. Before it was a cravat, it was a scarf that simply was worn around the neck. Men were wearing pins. They were actually going through there to keep the tie in place. It was functional. It was about just simply being small, not grabbing so much attention. That's when the shift happened. And as we saw the necktie evolve, the tie pin went with it. Now, one thing I don't like about tie pins is that they actually on modern neckties, they do damage the tie. They put a hole right through it. So, tie tacks, tie pins, I really don't go with nowadays. I recommend that you look at a tie clip. Now, a tie clip isn't going to, it's just going to put a bit of pressure there. And the great part about this is it keeps the tie in place. So, functionally, if you're going to be eating, you're going to be dressing nice, you don't want your tie falling in your soup. That's exactly why the tie clip is there. Now, where to place the tie clip? For me, it's going to be below the second button and above the fourth button on the shirt. Now, you can give or take a couple inches here. 
I do like to wear it a bit higher so it grabs attention, especially when you're wearing a jacket. Now, what about the rule about should you have it slightly ajar or straight? Eh, you know, whatever you want to go with. One thing I do like about the tie clip though, it was one of the only pieces of jewelry that the military sanctions for all the branches. It is the tie clip that has been the piece that has been allowed for a long time. Now, what about earrings? Well, guys, I wanted to hear your opinion down in the comments. I want to hear your opinion on men and earrings. Should they wear them? Should they not? As you can tell, I don't wear earrings. I've got friends that absolutely love them, but I want to hear from you guys down in the comments. And what about watches? Well, guys, I've got you covered with this video right here, 10 watch styles that every man needs to know. And if you don't know about rail watches, if you've got questions about pocket watches, this video, I cover it. Go check it out. An amazing video. I go into a lot of detail about all the different styles that you need to know about.